Now, I want to talk on managing conflict in the, in, in the family, managing conflict that is actually on uh, conflict resolutions. We need to manage conflicts in our relationships and in our families. And I've said again that this extends to the church family, all right? Yeah, we need to know how to manage conflicts amongst ourselves. We need to know how to manage conflicts in our, um, uh, you know, in our nuclear families, between husband, wife, between parents and children, between siblings in a home. So we, we, know, we have to master this, uh, uh, this art of managing conflict in our families. So I don't have my time, so I'll just go straight to uh, my PowerPoint. And why is this important? Why is this important? Why should we manage conflict in, in our families? Why should we manage conflict in our families? Uh, why should we manage conflict here in church? You know? It's very important that we know how to manage these uh, issues. One is that because the people who hurt us the most are those whom we loved the most. Please write that one down. All right? The people whom hurt us the most are the people we loved the most. You know, when you commit yourself into a relationship and you give your all, you give your time, you give your resources, you give everything that you find to be valuable, you know, whenever you commit yourself into a relationship, you know, in such a way, uh, in case there is a conflict and there is a fallout, hey, you know, that such a conflict will hurt us deeply. Therefore, the depth at which we love determines the intensity at which we are heartbroken in case of a fallout. Yeah, that, that's, that's real. You know, um, if we love casually, uh, you know, casual relationships may not hurt deeply in case of a fallout. But the very relations we have committed ourselves into so strongly and we've given our time and given our resources, you know, in case there is a fallout, then, the, you know, uh, the consequences or the ramifications, uh, you know, on our lives are always dire. And, you know, where do we find this deep, uh, you know, committed uh, commit, uh, commitment in relationship uh, that we find in family, that we find in family. And, and so that is why we have to know how to manage uh, our uh, relationships and perhaps whenever we have conflict. All right? <clears throat> so uh, let's read Psalms 55 and verses 12. Uh, and I want us to read aloud, all of us, Psalms 55 and verses 12. Uh, I hope you can uh, see on the screen. And uh, three start. Are we there? Let's begin. Yes, if an enemy was insulting me, I would have done what? I would have endured it. That's David. David is saying... Yes, I am in a problem. And when you read Psalm 55, you will see how David, you know, was mourning and was grieving and was in distress because of the condition he was in. And so David, in his analysis to his condition, he thinks and he says, uh, if it were an enemy insulting me, then I could endure it. Let me tell you, friends. There are people who can insult us. There are people who can hurt us. And you know what? You just rub it off and you say, I still have a home. You go home. But now suppose things are bad at home. Where do you go? If the enemy is not on the streets, but the enemy is at home, where do you go? You know... Let me say something among the Kalenjins. Please, the Kalenjins, forgive me in advance. Don't throw uh, something on me. Uh, you know, the Kalenjin men have a saying which they say this. 
when you go fighting out there, do not finish all your ammunitions. You know, it's not a good one, so that's a disclaimer I'm giving. <laughs> do not finish all your ammunition. Fight using all that you have, but just keep a few because there is still an enemy at all. <laughs> so, so for the colleges, man, I think uh, David will speak to you. Yeah? And you know the enemy is, I don't know who is that. So, David says it would have been much easier. I would have endured this challenge if the person who is insulting me is just an enemy. But he says, uh, verses, the, the, next, the next, verse 13 says what? Let's go to verse 13. But it is, can you say it aloud? It is, it is you who? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Wow. Can you, can you imagine who is that person? Hmm? So David says, I wish the person insulting me, I wish the person who is raising all these battles, this person who is really fighting me, I wish this was just an enemy out there. David says, I would have endured it. But David says, but it's you, a man like me. And he says, it's you, my companion. In some cases, it would be that person you said, I do. In some cases, it's that person you've walked this journey for a long time. In some cases, it's a very close confidant, someone you've trusted Someone you've given your entire heart. Someone you've given your entire life. Someone you've given all your resources. And David says, yes, this is my close friend. This is my close friend. Now, you see that? Now, David says it's hurting. And the reason why it's hurting the most is because the person who is doing this is my close friend. And verses 14, in fact, he says, I once enjoyed sweet fellowship with you. You know, I have sweet memories. I have those great experiences we've gone through together. You know, we enjoyed sweet fellowship with you. We enjoyed great sacrifice together. A very close and a deep person, uh, a very close person who we had a deep relationship together. And uh, David, in fact, goes on to say, uh, this is a man we also went together in the throng as we, uh, as we went into the house of God. You know, when the throng is going up the procession, you know, they were going together in the procession into the house of God. This could be someone we sang together in the choir. You see the men who are here? How we sang together, led by our brother Chesira and the others. You know, in case there is a fallout, hey, it may not be a good thing, all right? So the Bible, David says, oh, I'm hurt because of this. Now, uh, then someone would tell me, Pastor, I think now that you said we get hurt the most when we are committed or when we love the most, then you now tell me, Pastor, oh, I now have a solution. Mimi ni mjanja. Now, if this is what can kill me, let me stand aside. And you're saying, Pastor, I'm out of any other commitment in any relationship, and so let me be alone. Let me tell you, that's not okay. It's much worse to stay out of relationships. In fact, relationships are food to our emotional life. Relationships feed on our emotional life. And you know, our emotions are domiciled in our souls. And so, if you cannot feed your soul, 
if you cannot feed your emotions, then you get stressed up. And that's the reason maybe some of us are really, really under stress because we do not have people around us. You know, it's great that we have a home. The other day I was doing something in my compound and the fundi was helping me, told me, why have you done all this? And I told the fundi, you know, if you guys don't know me, I am one person who don't like moving around. Anytime I get out of this place, do you know my next destination is? It's home. And whenever I'm home, I even don't go to the gate. I'm really home. I like staying at home. That's me. And one of the challenges now when I came to the, uh, to the, to the, to visit, to the visitation department, you know, you know in visitation you have to visit. Please pray for me. Oh, I struggle. You know, the other day, one of our engineers was telling us, you need to be calling us and telling us, I, I, I want to visit. Do you know what? That's a very difficult thing for me. Anyway, now I've confessed my sins. Mm. Before the elders, please, the elders, don't suck me. Give me time. Mm. So, uh, but we need this. We need this, okay? If you are an introvert, someone who looks into himself, you don't open up. Do you know that you will die? I wish you were just like some of our great friends. When they come to church, even if they are late, they even don't want to know where you are reading the discussion. They pick up the discussion and say, hi guys, how are you? They even don't say sorry. You know those guys? Those people don't struggle thinking on how they messed up. They even don't know they messed up. All right? But those people love relationships. They are excited with groups and being out there. Friends, kindly help some of us. If you see me, I'm so quiet and you are such a kind of person, come and shake me up. I say, how are you guys? What's your name? Where do you come from? Can I help you? Can you look across to someone you're going to shake the hand right now and just do exactly that? Huh? Because we could be draining emotionally, all right? We could be together but lonely. That is the word, okay? So in, a, in such a church, we could be having people as really struggling. But friends, we need each other. So let's help those guys who are like me, who are shying off from crowds and relationships. Encourage us to come close. Amen? And when we are in the circle, please don't dominate the conversations. Also give us some time to say something. Are we together? So let's not shy off from uh, these relationships, all right? In our safari groups, please, we know, we know ourselves. Some of us are really managing and controlling the entire conversation. No, please, we are there also to be heard not only to always to be seen. Can we say amen? amen? Okay. So there are some causes of conflict in the family. Some causes of conflict in the family. One, uh, the first one is sibling uh, rivalry or rivalry among siblings. Rivalry among siblings. Uh, siblings are those are your brothers and sisters you are born with together into the same family. So those are your siblings, all right? And in this case also, we belong to the family of God. You know, we could also be having rivalry even in church. Huh? And, and these rivalries always uh, bring uh, conflict in the family and they, they really can really destroy uh, unity among uh, brethren. Uh, and we know the story of Abel and uh, Cain. You remember that? You know, Cain gives an offering, Abel gives an offering, but 
uh, Abel was, uh, Cain, sorry, was not successful. He was not successful and God rejected his offering. God rejected his offering. But the Bible says God favored the offering of Cain, uh, of Abel. And look at what followed. What ensued after that is that Cain was not excited. Cain was not happy with the success of his brother and his own downfall. Now, let me tell you this. It is so important that as we are together as a family, that we learn to celebrate the victories of our family members. Are we together? In a family, siblings are not meant to compete, but to complement each other. In a church set up like this, if any of us is promoted, if any of us gets successful in a field or anything, let's celebrate them. Let's celebrate them. Now, but guess at what happened with Cain and Abel. Cain was not happy with it. And you know what happened? There was death. He killed his brother. He killed his brother. We've had stories of siblings killing each other. We've had stories of people, you know, planning and thinking on how to bring down one another. That's not the will of God for us. That's not the will of God for us. Just imagine, I don't know if that could ever be possible in my lifetime, that I now become the bishop of Christ is the answer ministries. Hey. <laughs> Why are you celebrating? That is just a dream. Hmm? <laughs> now, suppose I am the bishop and you know me personally. You know, you see that? <laughs> personally. How would you be feeling when you are walking around? You say, man, you don't know me. I'm of another class, my, the very people who are my companions are not just the ordinary guys. Celebrate the success of your siblings, I'm telling you. You would rather be surrounded by a strong team of siblings than to be surrounded by weaklings around your life. As much as I could be weak, but as long as you have siblings who are caring and can stand with you, do you know what? You also become strong. You also become strong. I could really, really be shaking, but as long as I have a strong team around me, even the guy who is not strong enough will have the guts to shout the most. So please pray, pray for the success of your siblings, all right? We want all of us to rise in this place, in this city. We want all of us to be strong by the grace of God. So don't, don't be offended with the success of your brothers, I'm telling you. Don't be offended. Don't be offended. It is wickedness and it is folly to actually dig a hole for your brother. When your brother is strong, you are also strong. Alright? The second thing uh, that is that uh, the, this other thing that causes uh, conflict in the family is exasperation. Exasperation is actually uh, kwa Kiswahili ni uchokozi. Eh? Tuko na wachokozi hapa hivi. Eh? Kuna watu wanajua kuchokoza, you know? They really know how to select the word and land it so well in your heart. And they can just shoot right there. Bullseye. 
you know, they can tell you something you may, you know, you will lose sleep for the rest of the week. When you just remember them, tears just flow. Hmm? You say, this is what they really told me. You know, we have guys who are like that. But the Bible says here, Evasion 6, 4, in this case, addressing uh, parents and the children. And N New Living Translation says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger. You know, some of us, because of the authority we have, so you just provoke people to anger. Alafu munasema, mta na mta du. And I think that's why this one is addressing fathers. You know we fathers at times can do the things we do to our families? Hey, wazes muna tunajijua? Mutadu nini? Sasa uliambia pastor, utadu nini? Mutafanya nini sasa? Sasa step out of my house. Go and stay with the pastor. Go and bring even the bishop. Mutadu nini? You know, at times we misuse the authority we have. And we use that authority to provoke anger among the people around us. But the Bible says, do not provoke. Let's not provoke our children. Let's be understandable. Do you think our children don't have brains? You know, at times we just come in and we... We come into their world and we are dominating over them. They also have a say, okay? You know, there's a day my daughter went to the mom because of something. That's a long time ago. Mommy, maybe you don't remember that, but I still remember. Okay, my wife? Yeah, I still remember that. So my daughter goes to the mom uh, just because she wanted something from me. You know what? I even did not answer. I called my daughter aside and I told her, next time you use someone else to come to me, get it for yourself. I will not do it. The day you come yourself, then you know the door is open. Simonishi, pige makofi. You know, because I saw that was a recipe. You know, it means I was not a good daddy. I was not approachable. Why should she get emissaries to come? <laughs> hey! I love where as a father, you know, you know, you know, yes, you know, you have the boss. Are you really the boss? You, something is wrong. Do not provoke your children to anger. All right? The third thing that brings conflict in the family is partiality. Partiality. Can all of us shout partiality? You know, you become, you know, uh, you become partial. You, you, you love other people at the expense of other people. You have people who are the people of your class. You, even in such a church, you know, please, let's put aside partiality. Let, let, let's not imagine you only want to interact with people of a particular estate. In fact, the Bible really condemns that. Really condemns that. And in the case of family, we have the story of this man called Isaac. Now, I, uh, Genesis 25, 28, the Bible says, Isaac who had a test for wild game. You know, this Mze loved, uh, he loved, you know, the deer. The deer's meat. He loved the wild game. He had a taste for it. And guess who always provided for them there? Esau. Esau was also a great hunter. So Esau would go out, hunt there, and bring there his great delicacy. And that was amazing. And, uh, but Rebecca, now, 
Now guess, because Esau is giving Muse what would really soften and make the Muse feel good. So he loved who? Esau. Uh, and Jacob, the Bible says here, but Rebekah, Rebekah loved who? Re Rebekah loved who? I want you to be awake, you know it's hot. Rebekah loved who? Jacob. Now, when you read these lines like this, you may really think these are different people living, just the stories about different people who are not even related. But look here, this is a family. It is a family of four. And the Bible says there was so much, you know, partiality amongst themselves, whereby the father loved one boy and the mother loved the other one. We know why Rebecca loved Jacob. You know, Jacob did not like going out. He was like me. He always stayed with the mother. And so always being so close with mommy, <laughs> they became friends. These other guys out there hunting and he brings something, not to the mother, but to who? Now imagine such a, a family. And those are some of the kind of families we also belong. Let's not be partial in any way. Partiality breeds division. The fourth thing that brings uh, conflict in the family is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. Let's read very quickly Proverbs 17 and verse 9. The Bible says, love prospers when a fault is forgiven. You know, when a mistake has been committed and forgiveness is offered, then love will, will, uh, love will, will, will prosper. But the dwelling on it separates close friends. Now, what the Bible says here in Proverbs is that when someone commits an offense, please let's not continue reminding them of the wrong they made. Did you hear that? Let's not continue, let's not dwell on the wrong the people commit. You know, this is one thing I have come, I just learned the other day, this. You know, at times we call people for an inquest, trying to get the truth about something. You know, you don't have to continue pressing that person and you already have seen, okay, this guy is, in, is on the wrong. You know, some of the things you don't have just go, you don't have to press until, uh, you know, someone is really destroyed. In some cases, please, forgiveness is the greatest. Not even in some cases. The greatest way to handle conflict is what? Forgiveness. The last one is selfishness. And I think this is the very thing that really uh, drives conflict in a family and in any relationship. Everything lies and begins here. Selfishness, all right? Let's all of us read James chapter... 4 and verses 1. Please, let's go there right away. I want to finish with this. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a great, great, you know, analysis by the scriptures. You know, the question is, what causes quarrels and fights among you? And what's the answer? Don't they come from the evil desires? Anytime you find people quarreling, please don't bother yourself trying to get where the problem is. Just get, look into that relationship and I'm telling you for sure, there must be a selfish desire. Any quarrel we ever, ever engage or find ourselves in, there is some selfishness somewhere. There is some selfishness. There is some selfishness. Selfishness is what destroys relationships. 
But if we are generous, as the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 10 and 24, nobody should seek his own good, but the good of others. That is how we should live. That in any time, in any move you make, you are not seeking your good, but you are seeking the good of someone else. Be careful to do what's right and do not repay evil for evil. Selfishness, I'm telling you, is the foundation that breeds all conflict. Selfishness is the foundation that breeds all conflict. All. All. So anytime there is some conflict, just look for the selfish guy. Just look for the selfish guy. Yes, having said all this, some of us could be going through a difficult or strained relations, but God is faithful. Jesus says, I came to heal the brokenhearted. That is what God specializes in. Our hearts could be broken, but Jesus heals our broken hearts. We could be having broken relations in the family, individually, at the workplace, wherever. God heals the brokenhearted. Don't kill yourself. Come to him and he's going to heal you. And then finally again, let's not break the hearts of other people. Let's not be the reason why people are crying. Let's not be the reason why people spend their days mourning just because of what we did. Please, let's seek the good of each other. And that way, we will experience 